We're good. I'd like to welcome everyone to the May 1st, 2017 meeting of the Board of the Delaware County Board of Commissioners. And if everyone would please rise and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you very much. I'm Jeff Benton, President of the Board this year. Uh, to my left is Gary Merrill, our Vice President. To my right is uh, Fellow Administrator Barb Lewis, our County Administrator Farzana Ahmed. Our clerk today is Jennifer Walraven. So let's start. Resolution number 17-430 in the matter of approving the electronic record of proceedings from regular meeting held April 27th, 2017. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Made on motion 17-430, Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. We do not have any public comment or elected official comment today, so that brings us to item number four, resolution number 17-431, in the matter of approving purchase orders that are now certificates and payments of warrants in batch number CMABR 0428. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Third on motion 17-431, Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Resolution number 17-432. In the matter of approving a resolution of recognition from the Delaware County Board of Commissioners for Delaware Area Transit Agency employees recently honored by the Ohio Public Transit Association. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Jane Huss, Communications Manager. We have with us uh, guests from the Delaware Area Transit Agency. Uh, four of their drivers recently were awarded uh, honors by the Ohio Public Transit Association. We have Lori Poling, uh, who received the Best Customer Service Award. Kathy Blakeman, who received the Goes Above and Beyond Award. Eva McCarty, who received the Strong Leader Award. And Carolyn Rochon, who received the Safety Con Conscientious Award, and we recommend that you approve the uh, proclamations that you have before you for them so that we can present them. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is nice, nice recognition for jobs well done. I know my mother uses data. She, she has nothing but compliments to, for, for all your efforts uh, to help her. Um, so, okay, we'll do the photo op. I, well, you have oh, to we have vote. To vote. Okay, and then we right, can do right. photos. Got to vote first. Vote on motion 17-432. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. All right. All right. Well, come on up. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> All right. Big pictures. They'll have this. We'll come around to the front here. Denny? Check and see, yeah. Identify you in the photo, okay? Well, it is nice to recognize the efforts of the special special drivers and everybody else. Thank you very much. Thank you for all you do. And take good care of my mom. She really appreciates it. Um, okay. On to our next one. All right. Item number six, resolution number 17-433, in the matter of approving a non-binding term sheet by and among Delaware County, Columbus Outlaws, LLC, and the Delaware County Finance Authority regarding the issuance of development revenue bonds by Delaware County Finance Authority for public improvements in connection with the Tanger Outlet Columbus Development. 
So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. George Kaitsa, Delaware County Auditor. Um, commissioners, as you know, this financing was the subject of a work session last Monday in which we went in detail through the various uh, terms and conditions of the proposed financing. Uh, this financing uh, benefits both the county from the standpoint that we'll be able to refund the um, opening day improvements uh, related to the outlet mall, um, and it also benefits the Port Authority um, by uh, providing funds for them to pursue other economic development projects. We've had a, um, a team of, of uh, a county team consisting of our county administrator, our county economic development director, myself, Mr. Eric Holstetler, and also our bond counsel, Mr. Chris Franzman. We also have here this morning Mr. Kip Waller is representing the owner of the project. Mr. Waller has prepared the executive summary as well as the term sheet. And uh, at this point, what I would like to do is to uh, turn, uh, turn over the podium to Mr. Don Ranke, uh, who is representing the Delaware County Finance Authority, to just say a few words of how this will benefit the uh, uh, Finance Authority. Don? Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Morning, guests. Good morning. I'm Don Ranke. I'm the uh, Treasurer for the Delaware County Finance um, Authority. Thank you for having me this morning. Um, we're, the Finance Authority is real pleased about this particular um, deal in regards to the outlet mall. Um, it will, uh, it's, a, it's a new type of financing. I think it gets the word out that Delaware County uh, Commissioners in Delaware County is open for development. It's uh, created quite a few new jobs uh, out in that particular sector. It's the first um, development out there primarily, and so we're looking forward to really filling in not only on the east side of the 7136 uh, 37 uh, corridor, but also on the west side. And this is a unique uh, first step and a very successful first step. And so um, we're, we're, we've already, the, the Finance Authority is already entertaining a, a couple more deals out that particular way, and I think it has a lot to do with this particular uh, deal. Um, part of the fee we will reserve um, for a period up to uh, 10 years or until the financing is paid off, just as an extra safety net for the uh, commissioners. And so uh, I think it's going to be a good year for the Finance um, Authority, and, and it's going to be some interesting years coming down the road. So, And I'd like to thank Kip um, and George. They were uh, very, very instrumental, as well as um, all of the uh, Delaware uh, County execs that were involved, um, Bob and uh, Fazan and Sai, and um, just a very, very uh, uh, longer process than we thought of it. It's a very, very successful one in the end. So thank you for the consideration. And I apologize, I neglected to mention that uh, Sai Keeley was an integral uh, part of our team. Oh. <laughs> And by the way, that was a wonderful picture of Cy and his daughter on the front page of the uh, Gazette. And you can't talk yourself out of this, George. Pardon me? You try to talk yourself out of this. there it is. <laughs> we just have to have a copy of it. Yeah. Did you get Abby involved in this deal? Did you get Abby involved in this deal? No? She just did the resolution. She's not that far. Not quite. <laughs> she will be someday, I bunch. We're all here to answer any, if there are any questions. Um, yeah. No, I just appreciate all the, the work. It's a very complicated uh, deal, but we had uh, great minds and great expertise uh, working on this. And thanks for all your help, too, George, and shepherding it through. I always have great confidence when George Kites approves something. It's good. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Lewis. Unfortunately, George Kites is still used as a flip phone. <laughs> so does Warren Buffett, so you're good company. There we go. And they get reassured a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I, I know this project, is initially discussions probably go back to the last summer. It seems like maybe from that, Mr. Rankin alluded to the fact that it's been a uh, fairly long process, but... Uh, uh, I do think we've had a lot of the right people involved in the project, from Frazan to certainly Mr. Kaiser and 
and Sai and all the others on felling dimension, Mr. Lamb. Uh, and uh, I do think it's uh, knowing where the finance authority was, then called the Port Authority when I became commissioner four plus years ago, and where we are now with the potential to make a difference in our county, hopefully we'll turn potential into reality. Uh, I think this is a good step for the county and for all involved, all of our taxpayers. So thank you. Yeah, I, I would just like to echo that. It, this has been a long, complicated process, and it took a, a bunch of great minds to get us to this finish line, and I really want to compliment everyone and thank everyone who, who participated. Um, it's a it's a win win. It's a win for the county. It's a win for uh, Tanger Outlet Malls. It's a win for the region. You know, to to foster further development. Um, again, it's a very complicated transaction, but I think actually the most important thing in the long run is that it provides a really important boost to the finance authority. And um, this is the first significant transaction the finance authority has done. It's a compliment to that team that uh, such a significant transaction is being completed. And that will provide seed money for a lot more development and further opportunities and a, a, a blueprint for doing more deals in the future, which will just help further economic development in Delaware. So, so again, in the long run, I think the fact that the, the best part of this may be that it's, uh, you know, provides that seed and, and starting point for the Finance Authority to become a real driving force in Delaware County, which is great. So, again, thanks to all the Finance Authority folks as well as the others who participated. Um, any other? Any, anything else? Okay, we'll take a vote. Vote on motion 17-433. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Thank you. Resolution number 17-434. In the matter of approving an owner's agreement for Olentangy Falls East Section 2, Sayola Ridge Crossing Section 1, and Sayola Ridge Crossing Section 2. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Rob Riley, Chief Deputy Engineer. And in case you didn't notice, it's raining outside. <laughs> My uh, wife was nice enough to leave me her car, but she took her umbrella, so that was, oh. I'll have to thank her for that later. <clears throat> uh, we have uh, three owners' agreements for you this morning for construction of street and stormwater improvements uh, for a total of 74 single-family lots in, uh, I believe these are all in, uh, well, let's see, Concord and Liberty Township. Uh, so this will take care of the uh, uh, street and storm construction that follows our standard agreement, and we recommend approval. Okay. All right. Take a vote. Vote on motion 17-434. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-435, in the matter of approving a ditch maintenance petition and ditch maintenance assessments for the Meadows at Home Road. So moved. Second. Discussion. This is a 25-lot uh, development. Uh, this follows our standard uh, expedited uh, drainage maintenance petition to place portions of the drainage system on our county system, and we recommend approval. Yeah. Vote. Vote on motion 17-435. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Resolution number 17-436, in the matter of awarding a bid and approving a contract between Delaware County Commissioners and Shelley and Company for the 2017 Dell County Road Improvement Program. So moved. Second. Discussion. This is our annual resurfacing program uh, that we open up to all the townships in Delaware County. Uh, we have a, a large program this year uh, that will uh, resurface about 39 miles of county roads and over 50 miles of township roads. Uh, we received two bids for this contract. The low bid came from Shelly Company, uh, whom we've uh, worked with a number of times before. Uh, the bid was about 3.5% below the engineer's estimate uh, in the amount of uh, $3,116,886. And uh, we would recommend approval. Yeah, you answered all my questions. So, any others? Okay, we'll take a vote. Third on motion 17-436, Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Resolution number 17-437, in the matter of approving a general engineering services contract number 2017-1 between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners and Jobs Henderson and Associates Incorporated for services as listed in the scope below. So moved. Second. Discussion. 
We are asking for your approval of this contract to assist us with uh, various engineering services uh, throughout uh, the next two years. This is a two-year contract for $150,000, and it would be used as needed, uh, uh, of course, over those next two years for various things such as bridge inspection, uh, roadway feasibility studies, uh, traffic studies, uh, and various other things that we need to potentially react to quickly and also things that are uh, small uh, small enough that we wouldn't uh, make those standalone projects. And so this is a more efficient way to handle uh, some of those smaller items. And uh, we've done a number of these general engineering services contracts before and found them extremely useful for our, our office. So uh, we are asking for your approval of this. Um, what to, have you used this firm before? We have worked with uh, Joe Henderson before. They are uh, based in Newark. Uh, we, they've uh, actually worked on a couple different projects for us in the past over about the last uh, six or seven years. So uh, we think they'll do a, a nice job and be able to rack quickly. Again, that's that's a, a good reason to have this contract in place. Okay. All right. Vote. Vote on motion 17-437. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Bent? Aye. Resolution number 17-438, in the matter of approving a professional oh. services contract with CHA Consulting Incorporated for the project known as Dell TR114-1.51 Orange Road Improvement Phase 2, Part 3. So moved. Second. Discussion. This item is a, uh, a continuation of a previous design contract we uh, currently have with uh, CHA Consulting. Uh, this is for the Orange Road project, uh, the first phase of which was constructed uh, last year at the intersection of Route 23. Uh, this phase two, what we're calling phase two, will take uh, that improvement uh, eastward to the railroad tracks, widening Orange Road to five lanes and installing three new traffic signals uh, on that segment. So uh, we have negotiated a fee uh, with CHA to uh, uh, take the plans all the way through final design, and uh, we believe this will be the last modification of this contract uh, to finish up this job. Okay. What's the timeline on this project? And we will be uh, going through engineering uh, through this fall and um, uh, in right-of-way acquisition, utility relocation next year, and ready for uh, construction in 2019. And again, I, I should mention this is an Orange Township project, and so our responsibility in this uh, per the revised code is to provide them with the engineering and plans. Uh, they essentially take over uh, in the right-of-way phase. We assist them, but uh, they pay for all the expenses, and uh, also in the construction phase, they will they will let the construction contract. What's the plan beyond phase two? Are we going to build a bridge over the the railroad or go under it? Yeah, that's a good question. We, we've had some conversations uh, uh, with uh, Orange Township, the uh, township administrator, and uh, um, I think there's. Uh, that's actually something we want to look at uh, uh, here coming up, uh, basically looking at the feasibility and cost to do a great separation there. I know there's uh, certainly some interest with nearby residents in, in getting that uh, 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 railroad quiet zone, um, uh, at least as one component. Secondly, uh, safety obviously is a big component there with uh, not, not one or two, but three, three tracks uh, that you're crossing there. And, um, and certainly the traffic capacity and, and traffic flow is a, a concern there. So um, I do think that's, uh, that's something we'll have to work closely with the township on. It is, it is a township road, road obviously. Uh, that would be a sizable project to undertake. So, um, but I think we're, we're still early in the process. We need to look and see exactly what we can do there, uh, first and foremost, whether we could go over the railroad or under the railroad. Uh, and I think we need to answer that question before we get too far along. Mm -hmm. Based on the cost that we talked about further north at the home road, is that a little significant? I assume this would be similar cost. I think so. We, uh, we've we looked at a very high level, uh, and it's it's between 10 and, 10 and $20 million to, to mm. build a typical railroad grade separation. What about the division of costs then? I mean, I, who pays? With, since it's an orange road, yeah, and that's uh, those are all. That's a great orange question. Orange Township road, mm -hmm. um, and and I think that's something we need to talk, sit down and talk with Orange sure. Township uh, in more detail about because that's a, you know, there, there's a number of different funding programs that could potentially address that project, uh -huh. and I think we need to have that conversation once we get a better feel for, you know, what 
what it would look like, how much it would cost, and how long it would take to build it. And so mm -hmm. um, I think we're, we're getting close to that. You said other funding. Is, is there federal funds for something like that? There are federal funds available. Uh, the uh, Ohio Rail Development Commission uh, does provide some funding because uh, the the uh, railroads have a vested interest that's in getting what I rid of too, with the rail at grade crossings. That means that's less uh, lights and gates they have to maintain. So they do have a financial interest in that, and uh, certainly there's there's fun federal programs out there through MORPC and ODOT. So there have been I know at least one death that I'm aware of in that area crossing there going back a number of years, but. Uh, it is somewhat dangerous. So this the, the project we uh, uh, this contract will uh, will do will we'll set the road up for that uh, eventual project that I think someday needs to happen for sure. Uh, it's just a question of when and and how it gets done. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion one seven dash four three eight. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Resolution number one seven dash four three nine. In the matter of approving right away work permit summary sheet. So move. Discussion. We had uh, 12 right-of-way uh, permit applications uh, this round. Our staff has reviewed the plans for this work, and we recommend approval. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion. 17-439. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Resolution number 17-440. In the matter of authorizing participation in the ODOT Winter Contract 8. 01818 for road salt. So moved. Second. Discussion. We are uh, asking for your approval to participate uh, in the ODOT winter salt purchase contract. This is a contract we've participated in for, gosh, at least 10 years. Uh, um, and uh, what we found is, is we're able to secure better prices and uh, availability of salt has, has been better through this contract than previous contracts. So um, what we are asking for uh, your approval to do is order 8,000 tons of salt uh, for this upcoming winter. Uh, just as a frame of reference, we used about uh, a total of 8,300 tons this past winter, and that includes what we used for our county roads as well as what we sold to townships. And we do uh, sell, um, uh, I think it was about 3,700 tons we sold to the townships this past winter. So uh, a large portion of what we do store uh, at our facilities is we actually assist uh, the townships by selling it to them, and we, we sell it at our cost plus a, a handling fee uh, to basically cover our, our uh, moving the salt around. So um, You basically store it until they need it to form as well? We do, and uh, being that it is uh, sold and not... Uh, I'll say this, it's not guaranteed, uh, you know, we, it is our intention uh, every winter that we'll uh, supply the requested tonnage uh, if townships need it, but it is always subject to um, our use and under a, a, a really bad winter, I think we, we would have to consider, we, we haven't gotten to that point, I guess, so we've been fortunate uh, uh, in that we have enough storage uh, right now to almost cover uh, uh, what I call an average winter's uh, use. Uh, we can store about 11,000 tons under roof. We actually went into uh, this past winter full to the rafters. We had a pile as high as we absolutely could because we had such a late winter last year. And uh, the way the ODOT um, salt contract is structured, you have to purchase at least 90% of what you order, uh, and then you can uh, order up to 110% of what you uh, request at the same price. They have to honor that price uh, up to 110%. So uh, we took the order of 90% uh, la uh, last winter, or this, um, this spring, I should say. Uh, and then, um, you know, we're, we're going into this winter uh, about 85% full. Uh, we have uh, over 8,000 tons uh, in storage. Uh, so we'll take... Uh, we may take some deliveries before winter, uh, depending on the, you know, how it's looking. So, how many uh, subdivisions have taken part in this program? It's such a good one. Gosh, uh, I would say almost every every one of the eighteen townships okay. uh -huh. um, has has made use of it. Uh, a couple of the townships, Orange Township and I believe Liberty Township, order directly from ODOT, and so they take deliveries and, oh, and okay. have those. Mm -hmm. uh, delivery shipped directly to their barns, but for the other townships that don't have 
at least don't have large facilities. So several townships have have small sure. barns to, oh, to store a couple sure. hundred tons, uh, but uh, not enough to store a whole winter's worth. So in that event, we're, we're basically providing the storage for the townships. Well, in shared services, like I said, this is shared services. I think it's important. Uh, it would be unfortunate if we, every township had to worry about this to the degree that they might for the worst case mm -hmm. scenario. So I think it's great that we do that. And I would, uh, while we're talking about salt, I would add, uh, uh, as you're aware, we purchased uh, some acreage uh, along Selmo Parkway just south of Hyatt's Road uh, last year. And uh, we are finishing up a, uh, a plan to uh, construct a salt, uh, salt storage barn uh, at that location. And that would serve uh, Liberty Township, Concord Township, Powell, uh, and, and really are kind of our southwest quadrant of, of our county routes. Uh, and so that, uh, with, with that uh, 2,500 to 3,000 ton uh, capacity facility, we'll be able to store a full winter's worth of, of salt and what we think we'll, we'll typically sell to participating townships and, and uh, cities and villages. So that'll put us in a good position. Uh, Commissioner Mayor, I think you made a good point. It's, it's far more efficient to have uh, uh, a few storage locations rather than each entity having their own. Uh, so we're, we're able to uh, leverage some of that efficiency. All right, take a vote. Vote on motion 17 440. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17 441 in the matter of awarding a bid and approving a contract between the Delaware County Commissioners and the Writer Company for the project known as Dell TR 149 2.57 Klondike Road Bridge Replacement Rebid. So moved. Oh, second. second. Discussion. Uh, you'll recall that uh, uh, this project was bid one time previously. Uh, at that time, all the bids came in well over our engineer's estimate. Uh, we went back and uh, made some revisions to the plan specifications to uh, make some of the uh, what we had previously specified as, uh, as uh, mandatory uh, uh, work optional. Uh, that uh, appears that it did save us a little bit of money, uh, though our uh, low bid this time uh, was still over the engineer's estimate. And I think that's a, had a conversation with Frazan about this. I think uh, that's, that's due to a couple different factors. Number one, contractors uh, are busy right now. Uh, ideally, this is not the time you would bid this type of contract. Unfortunately, we have a road that's closed. Uh, Klondike Road was closed in... Uh, uh, it was right after Christmas, I believe, and, and so we're in a situation where we really can't wait until the, the ideal time to bid, which is uh, generally, you know, winter uh, when contractors are lining up their program. I would say most of the contractors that do this work already have their summers lined up already, and so we're, we're asking uh, someone to squeeze this in. And so I think the price has reflected uh, that. Um, that said, we are uh, uh, about, uh, what, uh, Seventeen thousand dollars over the engineer's estimate of seven hundred fifty-eight thousand. Uh, I would add that we do have uh, OPWC funding, uh, emergency funding for this project, two hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars that uh, Public Works is providing because uh, this, as you may recall, was uh, the old or the current culvert was washed out during the summer storms of June 2016. So uh, we were fortunate to secure that funding to assist with this. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17 441. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. <coughs> Resolution number 17 442 in the matter of approving a contract for Mary Haven Incorporated to perform services and provide assessments to be used by the Delaware County Common Pleas Court to determine eligibility for intervention in lieu of conviction. So moved. Okay. Discussion. Good morning. Kristen Schultz, Court Administrator for the Common Pleas Court. I have Chris Betts from the Prosecutor's Office. He drafted these contracts for us. Um, basically, these are contracts that the, the courts use in their intervention. So, um, so that is a statutory process that allows the offender to say um, drugs or alcohol or a, a mental disability was a primary factor in the commission of my crime. So as part of that, the statute allows for the offender to enter a, a, a guilty plea, but the, the judge kind of holds that guilty plea over their head and says, okay, 
if you do, if you go to recovery services, you do X, Y, and Z for a minimum period of one year, then we're going to get rid of that guilty plea, and you won't have a felony on your on your record. So this is this applies to lower level uh, felonies and only certain type of offenses. And these assessments that are provided by these contracts, Mary Haven and Recovery Prevention Services, help the judges determine one whether they even qualify for the for this intervention program, and two what what they should be subject to. So I'm happy to answer. I don't know if you want to detail any of the. Chris Butts with the Delaware County Prosecuting Attorney's Office. Uh, as Kristen mentioned, I did go ahead and draft these contracts. These contracts have been around uh, for a number of years, and these are essentially the same contracts um, that we used last year or that I drafted last year, just updated to reflect the current uh, information. Um, as Kristen alluded to, uh, this contract with Mary Haven, it's uh, number 15 on the agenda, and the next contract, number 16, which are on the agenda, uh, with uh, RPR, Recovery and Prevention Services, are essentially the same contract. They're just for different vendors. Mm -hmm. um, but in any event, um, they do have a maximum uh, expenditure in them of $20,000. I don't believe that total amount has been used. Um, I can let Kristen speak to that um, over the last few years. But in any event, um, the only way that um, this would be something that would be an expense to the county is where, uh, under the Mary Haven contract, that the individual would not be a resident of Delaware County, and under the RPR contract, they wouldn't be a resident of either Delaware or Morrow County. Mm -hmm. uh, and the assessments under these, uh, in that sort of a situation, uh, where they would not be a resident, would be $300 uh, per assessment under the Mary Haven contract and $350 under the RPR contract. And I'm sorry, I'm talking about both of them at the same time, but they are essentially the same contract. So I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that anybody might have, or, or Kristen, I'm sure, is as well. well. I'd just like to say with working with Stepping Up, I've really seen how these types of assessments, and I know this preceded Stepping Up, but I mean this, these types of assessments and intervention and help are so important. Actually save a lot of money, I, I believe, in the long run. So, But giving people the help they need so they can get their lives straightened out is... is uh, and be of help to their families is essential. So certainly support them. Okay. Um, I had a couple questions. How 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 uh, successful do you think the program has been? The intervention program. Yeah. Oh, I'd have to get, I could maybe try and, I don't have stats on me as far as um, reoffending, but I will say I had, I have participated in the recovery docket that the, the judge runs, and many of those individuals are on intervention. And that has been very successful, I would say. I mean, not everybody um, can make it, um, but a lot of them have really turned their life around and not reoffended. They've got jobs. They're, they've got their children back. They, you know, all of these positive steps in life is really a neat thing to see. So, uh, yeah, I would say it, it is a, a helpful tool. And, and one of the few things that the court can do that can can put somebody's life in the, in the right direction. I mean, we can send them to prison, we can send them to jail, we can put them on community control, but, but this program in particular, I think, really um, really helps, helps offenders make the right choices. How, how much have we um, spent on these two in the last year or the last uh, few years on average? Or, or? In 2015, for RPR, we paid them $1,050. In oh, 2016, sorry. it was only $350. Um, I see here. And for Mary Haven, it looks like in 2015, we paid them $3,900. And then I, uh, we don't have any record of paying them anything in, in 2016. Okay. So it really, it, it, we also have a third vendor that we don't have a contract with, and that vendor we, we do send a lot, a lot to. Um, that one. So it just depends on that availability. But he, we paid that that entity about $9,500 in 2016. So really pretty lightly used, these these. Well, the intervention in general is used more, but but the term that where we we pay them under this contract right. is not. So if we have a Delaware County resident who has insurance, or even a non-Delaware County resident that has insurance, doesn't fall under it. We're not paying them under right. this contract. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I should clarify with what I said earlier. 
um, where we have a resident that's not a Delaware County resident under the Mary Haven contract or a Delaware Morrow County resident under the uh, RPR contract, the only time that, that um, the county would be responsible for paying that is if the individual does not have insurance. So it limits oh, it yes. even more. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Vote. Vote on motion 17 442. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lutz? Aye. And then item number 16, resolution number 17-443 in the matter of approving a contract for recovery and prevention resources, Delaware and Morrill Counties Incorporated, to perform services and provide assessments to be used by the Delaware County Common Pleas Court to determine eligibility for invention, intervention in lieu of conviction. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? <laughs> Any questions? All right, we'll take a vote. Okay. Make sure get the right page. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. 852. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm. Vote on motion 17-443. We usually use it be us. I know. <laughs> Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Ben. Aye. Resolution number one seven. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Dash four four four. In the matter of approving a contract between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners, Delaware County Department of Job and Family Services, and Speakright LLC for verbal transcription services. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. David Dombrowski with Job and Family Services. This contract is a text to type um, contract. We use it for our social workers, or we're going to use it for our social workers. Right now, with every visit they make to a uh, child, every um, activity that goes on on a case, um, they're required by Ohio State statute to do activity logs, which is a um, just a detailed accounting of what occurred at each visit or interaction. Um, and they're required to do that within seven days. Right now, it takes, on average, 30 to 60 minutes to do an activity log per case. Um, what they will be able to do through this contract is call up this provider, um, speak their activity logs to them. They type it send it to us, then we cut it and paste it into the um, activity log. So it's anticipated um, what takes 30 to 60 minutes now will take 15 to 20 once we get this contract in place. So uh, we're requesting your permission. This is fairly commonly used. I know you said it was in Franklin. Franklin uses it. Um, Sandy, who's the assistant director Sandy. for Children's Services, they used it in Van Wert. Okay. Um, in both counties, um, love it. So okay. um, we think it will improve the efficiency of our staff here uh -huh. in Delaware. Sure. Have you ever used federal and state dollars for this? Pardon me? Have you ever used federal and state dollars for this? Yes, there's no local money in this contract. So, so this is a new uh, program to, to automate? Yes, it's new to Delaware. Okay. Um, and so we released a quote um, and got three vendors to respond. And based on the turnaround that we were looking for, this was the lowest cost vendor. So, okay. um, yeah. uh, is, is this budgeted? Do we have something in the budget? This was budgeted this year for us. Okay. All right. Take a vote. Put it on motion 17 444. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Interesting. Thanks, yeah, Dave. That's a good, yeah. Yeah, good idea. Gosh. Resolution number 17 445. In the matter of setting date and time for public hearing number one for 2017 Community Development Block Grant funding. So moved. Thank you. Discussion. Good morning, I'm Jenna Jackson, the Economic Development Coordinator. This is uh, the required public hearing that we have to have for the Community Development Block Grant Program. Um, we are also going to uh, do it in conjunction with the City of Delaware since this is an off year for um, funding for us. And we also have to hold a Community Development Implementation Strategy meeting as well, so we're going to do that all at the same time. So I recommend your approval. Yeah. Vote. Go down motion, 17-445. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. So. Resolution number 17-446, in the matter of approving the Sanitary Sewer Subdividers Agreement for Olentangy Falls East, Section 2. So moved. Okay. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Mike Fomer, Sanitary Engineer. Um, we have our standard uh, subdividers agreement for this subdivision and recommending approval. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-446. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-447. In the matter of approving the sanitary sewer improvement plans for the meadows at Home Road. Second. Discussion. 
once again, the, uh, this is a subdivision off of, uh, I think Rob reported on it earlier in his section. It's a 26-unit uh, condo development on Home Road near Saturday Reserve, and uh, the plans are, have met our approval, and we're recommending approval. Okay, vote. Vote on motion 17-446. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 17-448 in the matter of authorizing an amendment to the use of a procurement card for the regional sewer district. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, we're, uh, th this is the procurement card that our office uses to make purchases, and uh, we're just requesting to increase the limit so we don't have to break purchases up and, and so we don't exceed our limit. So. Okay, go. Oh. Vote on motion 17-448. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 17-449 in the matter of approving a services agreement with Master Lighting Services Incorporated for as needed lightning repair lighting repairs <laughs> and sewer district facility. <laughs> so moved. Okay. We're not gonna repair lightning. No, no repair. Yeah. All right. Uh, discussion. Yeah, th this contract, uh, the district over the last several years has been going through and changing out fixtures. Um, we also have them maintain our, our mast lights and things of that nature. And uh, we felt it prudent to have them under contract so that we have terms and conditions, insurance, things of that nature, given the, the nature of their work. And so it's, a, it's an as-needed agreement uh, for the year um, when we need services. Okay. Vote. Okay. Nope. Vote on motion 17-449. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Brings us to item it's number 23, and there's a sheet that has an extra line on it in front of you for that. Okay. Resolution number 17-450 in the matter of approving a transfer of funds and the supplemental appropriation for the clerk of courts. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Sarah Kelly, Assistant County Administrator. This resolution is needed to purchase a high-density shelving system for the clerk of courts to be installed in the new courthouse, and I recommend your approval. So they need to do this now? Yeah, we need it. to do this now. Uh, we have to get the base installed before before the flooring is installed. Okay. All right, vote. Okay. Vote on motion 17-450. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you. Thanks, so. Thank you. That brings us to administrator reports. Uh, good morning. Just wanted to give a shout out to Jenna Jackson. She took off, but we can always tell her that she was mentioned. Um, she submitted two sites on, in Orange Township off of 23 to the state of Ohio for their consideration as job-ready sites. It's a program that Jobs Ohio has, and we don't know if they're, they're going to be selected, but we are hopeful they'll be selected, and that just puts us in a better position to market those sites to future developers. So, Great. Jenna spearheaded the project, and we wanted to give her some recognition. Yeah, that's a very detailed process and difficult to get the qualifications. How, how many are there across the state? Like five or something like that? Didn't mean to drag you up to the podium. Oh, Bob Ryan, Economic Development Director. I believe there are two sites that made it through last year's certification yeah. process, which was the first certification year that we had. So clearly very difficult and not very many across the state are qualifying. No, we submitted five last year and none qualified. <laughs> <laughs> At least so, we're trying. Yeah, yeah. The, the, one, one of the issues with last year was sites submitted had to be in EPA uh, designated counties. We were not one, so all of our sites automatically were not eligible for s site certification. Okay. That policy has since been changed. It, it's our understanding, so we we're hopeful that this year we could see at least one of those, if not both of those sites, become certified. And I think you would echo it's a very important uh, to have sites qualified as job ready? Yes. Um, in today's world, about 90% or so site selection searches start online. Anything that can highlight a site as being especially well prepared for development is a huge plus. Well, the efforts, I think, same thing. Compliments to Jen yes. and Bob for, for getting those sites advanced. Thank you. So I have questions. That's it. Okay. Commissioner Merrill. I don't have anything today. All right. Gee. <laughs> <laughs>
We don't have any time to kill. Um, Commissioner Lewis. Well, I was honored to speak at the Delaware County Historical Society last Thursday night, and the timing was perfect because I could announce uh, the uh, community right. enhancement grant of almost 30000 which uh, we had just really? awarded no. earlier in that day. They were very happy to see me after I said that. <laughs> so I may be invited back. I do that every time. But uh, no, I made it clear that we all approved the, the award. And, and I spoke to a group of volunteers, and it was amazing, all these, again, all that they do. And only, I, th I know they have one, Donna, of course, is the executive director. And um, I don't even know if they have any, any other paid staff. But, yeah, but just just amazing the enthusiasm and and uh, certainly there which is one of the reasons it's just such a great organization and the importance of keeping history alive i did mention that you had found uh, uh, when they showed us the old phone books that you found uh, uh, one of family. yes one of your family members so so uh, and and i guess one of the ladies volunteers told me then that she was working um with our records department to actually um help them preserve and i'm i'm not sure if it was the phone books or just what it was but but she has been working with with our records department which i thought was great too so that's that's all okay um, just a couple things. We met with a couple of the legislators last Friday. Uh, the DMM HRSB, uh, that's SourcePoint. DMM HRSB sets it up, and we, had, we held the meeting at SourcePoint. A um, lot of issues at the State House right now centering around the budget primarily. The Medicaid uh, managed care organization sales tax is, I don't know if anything has been resolved over the weekend, but it, it was pretty unclear exactly what was going to be done. As of Friday, the budget amendments were due Friday, and then they want to get them out of the House uh, this week. And uh, they'll go to the Senate, and they'll work on them together. And obviously, the deadline is June 30th, so it, it's kind of one of those stay tuned. Um, not terribly optimistic that the full funding will be replaced, but uh, I know they're trying to figure out a way to do that. Um, they are working on a, a career center um, uh, le legislation, which uh, should enable a vote to take place in those four counties that weren't didn't vote last time. Um, we'll see how that progresses, but uh, I think there's general recognition that uh, whatever can be done should be done to uh, to uh, resolve that uh, that issue there. Um, we talked about prevailing wage. Talked to to our three representatives on prevailing wage making. There is a legislation introduced by Senator Huffman uh, in the Senate that uh, would make prevailing wage uh, optional at the local level. And uh, two of our legislators, Senator Jordan and Representative Brenner, are strongly behind that. Um, so and that that could save with our 150 million dollar program that Mike's got online for the next 10 years, that could save us $20 million easily, maybe 30 or $40 million. So uh, we need to get behind that. Um, they're working to try to restore indigent defense to 50%. They've increased significantly opiate um, remediation funding in, this, in the latest version. I think $180 million is the number they've increased, something like that, in the, in the uh, current version of the House budget. Um, we've gotten a lot of good publicity on the Competitive Advantage Project. Um, you know, I think it's been interesting. You know, I don't think there's a whole lot of controversy about the number one priority being the big walnut interchange. I think that that is generally regarded as as the most important priority for the county. And, and uh, so the big challenge is getting funding and getting it done as soon as we can. We can get that done in a couple of years, can't we, Chris? <laughs> <Couple weeks. laughs> That's why he's here. <laughs> so anyway, we've got a lot of people working on it, and hopefully in Columbus 2020 and, and Morpsey will be able to, uh, you know, accelerate some of those projects because they are benefits to Delaware County and the region economically, and that, that was the purpose of that program. Uh, we do have the Finance Authority meeting tomorrow evening, um, their board meeting. And that's pretty much it for me. Um, we do have need for executive session. We have need session. for executive session. <clears throat> 
Resolution number 17-451 in the matter of adjourning into executive session for consideration of employment and compensation of a public employee or public official and to consider the purchase of property for public purposes. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-451. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. All right. We're in executive session. Hey, I'm getting my call.